are your marching orders for the year. The first thing I saw was that the first 120 days of this presidency will set the tone for the rest of this man's term. The first 120 days, pay attention, there will be news writings, there will be meetings, there will be talk shows that review the first 120 days and you will find that what's done in the 120 days will be done for the rest of the term and there won't be much change. America is preparing for a season of war. This will be a literal war. God said that there's going to be an old enemy that comes back up. And uh, we, I don't believe that the war will begin this year, but we are preparing. It will be a threat, but we're preparing to go into a season of war, and this can be brought into arbitration. What I believe the Lord showed me was that we must pray for our president's counsel. You're going to find out that there are consistent medical breakthroughs for, the, uh, for autoimmune diseases. You're going to find that there is a scandal with the automobile industry. Something is going to happen with Ford this year. It's going to be a shaking up in the automobile industry, so be very careful of that. I also saw, saw something very unique, and it's virtual reality theaters. This year, there will be a patent release where in the next five years, when you go to the show, you will feel like you are in the scenes. Believe me, it's going to come to pass. There's going to be a day where uh, movies will come to theaters and you will go there and feel like you are standing in the jungles or you are standing in the scenes of movies. Chance the Rapper will become an educational activist. God's about to blow on Chance the Rapper and he's going to actually start a moral revolution. There's going to be a, and I don't know, I have, I, to be honest, I didn't even heard many he wrote before, but the Lord said he was about to start a purity campaign. God's going to use chance to start promoting marriage. You watch what I say, uh, and it's going to be actually, actually very powerful. Absolutely proud I am and thankful 
for you to be at 2018 Spire Conference. Um, all of your sacrifice and the Lord was faithful. Um, the Lord was faithful. And uh, Pastor William McDowell is one of my greatest friends and he told me that there would be a shift in the weather when he came. And certainly, the Lord took us from zero below whatever he was doing. I mean, we was ready to do barbecues uh, today. And so we are grateful. Let's give it up for Pastor William McDowell. And um, all of you. So I have a couple of prelims I'm going to give. And then we're going to move into the word of the Lord for tonight. Um, some very powerful things are about to take place. And uh, if you've never seen me do this, when I'm done with my announcements, I'm going to let you know why this is needful and why this is necessary. Um, believe it or not, in 2018, there's still very many Christian leaders who believe that the only thing you need to survive is a pastor. They think if you get you a good pastor, you're doing really, really well, and you're doing good for yourself, right? But how many of you know that just like you need a good pastor, you need a prophetic word. Now I know that's really radical because you think that that's optional, but the fact that you've been surviving off of preaching and you do not have access to a current word from the Lord is ludicrous. The whole Bible we read is prophecy. The entire Old Testament is prophecy. There were wicked kings in the Bible who would ask prophets and most pastors don't ask them nothing. So I believe that what we're doing tonight is biblical and we're going to see the hand of God move and predict some things that's going to be amazing for you. Amen? Amen. So it's very, 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 very important. And for most of you, it's going to be great, 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 great news. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for One Church, six locations. I love y'all. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, let's do this real quick. That is all our salutation. <laughs> the heavens are in fact open. And it is something that I have seen with my own eyes. I'm going to begin to share with you the word of the Lord. Uh, and normally I would not do what I'm about to do. But I'm going to do it. Let's make it a thing. I just want to prove to you uh, how wide the heavens are open. It is human nature to resist the bigness of God. So you're going to hear me say some things tonight that God wants to do for many of you. And in your subconscious mind, you're going to be like, oh, that's too good to be true. But most, all of the miracles that have happened in my life were all too good to be true. And this is going to be a year that's going to be too good to be true. It's important that you know what God wants to do so that you can position yourself rightly. The last several years as we prophesied, I know y'all blame me for killing off a, a Supreme Court justice. And, you know, I made a lot of uh, uh, colleagues after that folk wanted to be on my good side. And, um, uh, but this year is going to be very different from a lot of different years. Um, just a couple of, just yesterday I think, I signed the most important contract that I have ever signed in my life. And, and without giving you too many details, what I tell you is that this contract gave me three city blocks. <laughs> I told you all nations. Now, if that doesn't excite you, I did it in cash. Do it again. I told you the heavens were open. Now, I'm not here to play games and give you poetry. I'm not, I mean business with heaven and hell. The heavens are... Amen. The Lord gave me a scripture for this year. You know, you're just going to say it and move on? Yeah. God gave me this, um, and let me not be rude, I love all of my guests, these are my favorite people in the world, every one of them, I love you so much, thank you for being here with me at the Fire Conference. Jeremiah 32, 17 through 21, and I'm going to do my best not to preach, but I want to give you the, the word of the Lord. When you know what God is doing, you can position yourself rightly, and you can position your faith rightly. 
As I started to meet with God about the year, one of the first things I noticed that was different from other years was that he contrasted what he was doing in 2018 with what happened in 2017. It's never happened to me before where God started comparing this year to that year. But here's what God spoke to me about the 2017-2018 collaboration. What God allowed to happen to you, around you in 2017, was to provide character for the success of 2018. Now, if 2017 was easy for you, that means nothing to you. But what God was trying to do was give you the internal hardware to handle the opening in 2018. So the reason 2017 was as harsh as it was is because God wanted to make sure that you could stand under this favor and not be overwhelmed. The first thing the angel of the Lord said to me was tell my people violent favor is on the way. It's going to be aggressive. I heard the term hostile favor. It's going to be a favor that's almost rude without consideration. It's being poured out on God's people as a defense. So I'm trying to tell you what God did in 2017 was form a character gauge in you so that you would not be corrupted by the favor of God in 2018. You need to receive the word of the Lord. If you pass the test of 2017, you've got consecutive openings. I'm going to say it is so. And here's what the Lord spoke to me about the year. He said that it would be a year of notable signs and wonders. This is going to be a year where God makes those in his house and those outside of his house take notice. Note. It will be a note-taking year. There are happenings of God that are going to happen just for the sake of history and record. There is a rewriting in the spirit and there is a brand new publishing in the spirit of things that God is going to achieve in his house. But he told me signs and wonders and I started to look at that word because you know when you are a student of moves of God like the latter rain movement and the uh, Pentecostal movement, when you hear signs and wonders you think healing. But sometimes signs and wonders are bigger than healings. I, I started to see uh, unusual things, and I'll explain. Like the Spirit of God visited me about the type of children that would be born this year. That they, they were going to be so uncommon. The, their eye color, some of them would be very bizarre. You would see many of them born with athletic tendency and athletic acumen. There is a, uh, I don't want to get too far into this, but you're going to see that cities around America are going to begin to, and even states, are going to begin to have discussions about altering legal age. In most cities, in most states, it's 18 and 21, but you're going to start to hear legislation about changing them because something about the type of people being born is changing molecularly, psychologically. It's going to be bizarre. And God is sending people to the earth with solution in them. So what's going to happen is before they learn a thing or are graded in a thing, the IQ of the Spirit of God will be in them, and you're going to see a lot of new things come through them, but that's the type of bizarre year it's going to be. And, in our, and our, there's a prayer in Jeremiah 32 that is going to typify this year for all of you that will receive this. Jeremiah 32, 17 through 21. In the NIV, if you can put that up, that would be amazing. Jeremiah 32, 17 through 21. Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. Get ready to see the hand of the Lord stretched you have seen the hand of the Lord, but many of you have not seen the hand of the Lord stretched or extended to you. There is an extension of the hand of God toward the righteous. He's going to extend himself because, again, he's providing new record. He's providing new data, new things to be compared to. So the hand of the Lord is being extended in your direction. Who receives that? Now, this next statement is something that I want you to begin to hold fast to prophetically. Look at what Jeremiah the prophet said about God in this prayer. Nothing is too hard for you. I'm telling you prophetically God is changing the laws of possible and impossible. He is starting to deal with what you believe is possible. God is vexed about his people's intoxication with science and fact 
And what he's wanting to do is pour out a new degree of faith upon the earth. And these faith carriers are going to be funnels for the miraculous. Now, here's what I heard while I was sitting down in worship. Some of you got diagnosed with anxiety last year. Something happened to you and in your nerve and nervous system you started having anxious attacks and anxiety issues. Let me tell you something. God is anointing men and women in 2018 to be anticipators. These are going to be people whose whole job is to expect God. What would If you believe that God is going to take your anxiety and make it anticipation. It used to be a fine line, but God's going to take the people who are prone to worry and make them carriers of expectation. One of the things I saw is the Anna anointing coming upon the earth. It's going to be an anointing of expectation. It's not just prayer, but it's prayer that creates paths for the things that God wants to do. Come on. It's time to anticipate. It's time to anticipate. It's like watching the stage be set for the word of the Lord to perform in your life. If you had a nervous issue, your nerve was bad, you had sleep issues because you spent all night and day worrying, I'm telling you, that day is over. God is releasing a realm of faith in the earth toward his people and you're going to believe God for you and other people. The kingdom of panic and anxiety and worry and paranoia is coming down by the power of God and the level of faith that we are about to see is going to be unreal. It's the gift of faith, the spirit of faith, the move of faith. Say, I receive that. I receive that. Where was I? Nothing is too hard for you. You show love to thousands. The Lord told me, and I have a lot of specific ways he's going to do this, but a part of what he was going to do was make up to those that felt forsaken. In 2017, I told y'all it was too romantic in here. Please, more lights. There were people that felt forsaken because of what God allowed them to experience. Oh God, oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? And what the Lord told me was that in 2018, many of his people were going to hit a sweet spot. That there is a romance of heaven coming really high. Hey, 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 hey. There is, a, there is a breath of the Spirit being poured out on the earth for those who felt left and those who felt like God was ignoring and God was putting them in unnecessary hardship. Heaven is coming to people who had it hard. Mark my words. And you're going to begin to see God extend His loving kindness in a way that you had not seen it before. He says you show loving kindness to thousands, but you remind people of the sins of the parents and the curses after them. Here is one of the things that the Lord spoke to me. This is a year to be aggressive about confronting generational curses. Hey. Many of you have known about generational things and you kind of passively interacted with them, but there must be, don't, and don't ignore it in ignorance, thinking that because you speak with tongues or you go to church or you're faithful that those iniquitous patterns won't affect you. If you know that in your bloodline there has been a tendency for divorce or for debt or for perversion or for rape. This is a year where you need to deal with that thing by name because Satan is so angry about what he senses God doing oh God. that the only legal thing he'll try to do is put his hand on a generational curse and claim in you what still belongs to him. So if you have been flirting around with a generational curse of insanity, a generational curse of rejection, some of you have a generational curse of, 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 of rotating and just a vagabond where you never feel at home nowhere. No matter how hard they love you and accept you, you just always feel like ain't nobody your people. You have got to put that thing to death this year. Why? Because God is trying to make sure you get the right inheritance. So what Satan wants you to do is to receive the wrong one. But how many of you know this is a year to tell your daddy's devils, stay the hell out of my life. It doesn't matter. Come on, I'm talking to my people in here. Everything attached to my last name that came from Sheol, I'm sending that thing back to Cinder. I am the plot twist. Look at somebody say, I'm the plot twist. Open your mouth, your strings, and say, I'm the plot twist. Before me, it was one way, but after me, it's going to be a different way. There is a bride. It's going to be a curse-breaking year. Did you hear me when I said? 
It's going to be, and I'm, I'm not talking about just the curses that you know. This is going to be a year for silent curses. There have been things in your blood that's been resting, waiting for the right moment of your success. But God's going to embarrass, expose, and bring the power of iniquity down in your life. It is so. Hey, it is so. Tell divorce, it is so. Cancer, it is so. Now, all of you that were born with a genetic trait towards sickle cell, it is so. Everything active in your blood that came from hell, God's going to put an end to it this year. So it's a year to be violent with generational curses. So that means you have to look at things for what they are, do it. It doesn't mean you have to dishonor anybody. Don't blame nobody. Don't look for people to apologize. Just deal with the genetic code so that it doesn't interfere with the blessing of the Lord. Forgive me for hollering. I'm sorry. I'm just, you know. It says, great and mighty God, whose name is the Lord Almighty. Great are your purposes and mighty are your deeds. God is shifting very many of you in the body from preparation to purpose. Until you're ready for purpose, you remain in preparation. And there's been a lot of people who for the last several decades have been in preparation because they could not handle the depth, the language, the scope, the scale of purpose. But God is shifting many of us from preparation to purpose. And even purpose has a beginning place. So it's not going to be like you feel like you finally arrived somewhere, but things about you are going to begin to make sense. Things around you are going to begin to be directly attached. And for many of you, you may have the tendency to be discouraged because you're going to find that you were educated in something you were not born for, that you spent money studying something you'll never again use. But be encouraged. The good news is nothing pays you like purpose. It doesn't matter what you went, I'm sorry, what you went to school for. Nothing pays like purpose. And if you find your purpose, prosperity is going to follow. I release the anointing of discovery to you. There is so much more to you than what you are aware of. And God is bringing purpose and pain together. Purpose and process together. Purpose and power together. And you are going to make sense. Say, I receive the word of the Lord. Great are your purposes and mighty are your deeds. Your eyes are open to the ways of mankind. And you reward each person according to their conduct as their deeds deserve. I'm not even halfway through this. A part of what God wants you to do is continue to bless the evil and the wicked. Mm, come on, sir. If you miss this, you're going to miss major favor. I'm not trying to act like this is going to be a year of all good news and all. But if you are offended this year, if somebody brings your name down this year, if you notice that somebody has talked around the toilet about you, I am commissioning you to bless them. This is New Testament Christianity. Many of you need to receive this as a warning. If, some, if you find your name is in somebody's mouth, somebody's trying to sabotage you, you're trying to do that, write an invisible check. Find a, find a PayPal app. Do something, send it to a friend. But you have got to bless them. It's a new warfare strategy. God knows that if you will bless those that curse you, he said it's like putting coals upon the head of the enemy. Once you bless those that curse you, you remove yourself from enemy territory. And now God has to protect you. But if you retaliate, you are on the same turf as the offender. And you end up going in an endless cycle of battle. Bless those that curse you. It is a directive and it's prophetic in this season. Put money in the hand, checks in the hand, give that away. Now, if you can't handle that, you can't handle money, period. You better hear what I'm telling you. Bless them, bless them, because God is looking to reward men according to their deeds. Verse 20 is our active verse. You performed signs and wonders in Egypt and have continued them to this day. In Israel and all mankind have gained the renown of yours. Let me tell you this. The reputation of God is about to gain momentum in America. Now I know, and I'll give you some of what I sense about our president and our government, but here's one of the sentiments the Spirit of God expressed to me. He is tired of hearing Trump's name more than his own. Come on, sir. Don't shoot me, I'm just the mouthpiece. He told me he's sick of people using Trump's name, glory to God, and not using his name. <laughs> You're going to see 
God uplift his reputation and he's going to do it through very many of you. I've seen it with my eyes. God is going to do it through many of you. How many of you believe that? He says you did that to this day and you kept your renown going in all of Israel. And uh, Lord, I skipped off my nose. I don't care. Oh, verse 21. He says you brought your people, Israel, out of Egypt, which was a culture that held them by signs and wonders, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great terror. Here's the conclude of this verse. I'm going to give you what I see happening. The way God's going to address the crisis in America is going to be strictly supernatural. If you are a Christian that is uncomfortable with the supernatural, you are going to feel extremely misplaced. There's going to be some deliverances that are only supernatural. There are going to be some provisions that are going to be only supernatural. A part of wisdom for this year is you ought to spend a lot of time praying in the Spirit. Because if you lose your sensitivity, there's going to be an absence of God's ability to connect you instantly. I'm seeing many of you walking up the street unknowingly into a divine appointment. You will get up trying to go to the grocery store and end up in a job interview. You will find yourself trying to vacate in certain places and there will be people that see you and say, I've been looking for you and searching you. God showed me burning hands. There are investors and benefactors that have money that's causing them trouble and they feel like it's not going to stop until they get it into the hands. You, listen, no, I don't want to go crazy. You are in the dreams of somebody right now. There is a Nebuchadnezzar that's gone to sleep recently and they see your face and they're going to see it over and over again. But God will give no rest until his reputation is fought in the earth the way he wants it to. So I receive it. Now, let me give you this. It's going to be a year of violent favor. Violent favor. Dedicate your children to God. Your marriages to God. Set your house up. And here is the warning. Favor is dangerous to the undecided. Well, huh. There is a warning there. If you have not chosen to be completely on the side of light, and in every test, every trouble, every stress, you flirt with who you used to be, favor will ruin your house and you will collapse. Because that favor can be used by hell to convert you and sentence you to never change it. But if you remain integral to the new you, whatever that looks like, the favor of God, you must build your house on the rock to handle what he's pouring out in your life. Say, I receive the word of the Lord. Now, God showed me that the harvest is white. And many of you are going to be marked harvesters. He took me to the scripture where Jesus' first scandal was that they called him a friend, ironically, of Matthew. <laughs> and, a friend, and a friend of, of tax collectors and publicans. And they accused him for being a friend of sinners. God is sanctifying you and completing his work and maturing you because he's about to establish relationships with talented, tormented people. All right. It's going to happen. And God is going to entrust Christians with access to talented, tormented people. Watch it and see what I say. I see something happening with intercessors around the world. There is a, a, and I want you to hear this and receive this in the fear of the Lord, there is a broadening of intercessory responsibility. Intercessors must go through things so that their patience and their pain tolerance is deeper. As an intercessor, you surrender the right to your personality. You surrender the right to your preferences. You surrender your right to your targets and timelines. God makes you compatible to his schedule and the season that is upon his heart. I saw men and women being raised in prayer once again because God is going to begin to do expedite things by prayer. Prayer is going to begin to be the source by which things are expedited in the earth. So if you are an intercessor or you, you feel like you've been called by God to prayer leadership and I really feel burdened for my Zadoks in the room, I consider the Zadoks the male animal. 
us. These are men who are trying to force themselves to preach and, and be a pastor, but all you really want to do is so, bro, let me just release you from that burden. You do not have to start a church. You do not have to preach every Sunday. If you are a man who's called to pray, man up and pray. Wear that garb as if it is the most powerful thing God has given you and stand as a priest. God is looking for men who will wrestle in prayer to clothe them for the nation. It is so. That's coming in this season. I also saw where there is a very powerful riding anointing being birthed. Yes. This is just what I see in the body of Christ. God is creating textbooks for the future right now. So this is a season for the pen of the ready writer. Those of you that lazily put books together, stop it. God is looking for people that will put well-polished text to paper because he's trying to send them several seasons ahead of you. God is trying to allow people to know you in some years. But there's going to schedule you by seeing your books now. So this, this, this is just me. Get rid of dumb graphics. Sometimes you don't need to self-publish. You need to be deliberate about putting your stuff in the hands of somebody who can improve it. Because God is about to highlight the book. The book. I see open books even all around this state. And many of it won't be uh, teachings. Some of it is going to be life stories. There is a creative aspect coming to those of you that... Oh, Whoa, I'm trying to hold this in. Those of you that grew up in foster homes and those of you that almost died and had after death experiences. God is calling for you to chronicle that because he's going to allow a generation yet to be born to eat off your life by what you right now. It is so. So I receive that. Oh, this is going to be a year where God is going to convict many of you. I hope you're not bored because I'm ready to prophesy. God is going to convict many of you to prison ministry. Now, I know that's not a word about a bins and a house, but I'm going to tell you what I've heard from the Spirit of Grace. One of the reasons why churches are not exploding is because they forgot prisoners. And I'm not talking about spiritual prisoners. I'm talking about literal criminals. We are competing over who's leaving what church up the street where there are many harvests right in prison systems. Some of you apostles are going to receive prison mandates this year. God is looking for those who will hear the call of God to go into your local jail cells. There is a vacancy in America right now for people who do prison ministry because we're stuck in front of phones and we're stuck in front of TVs and we're stuck trying to get on magazine covers. But I dare some real apostles, Lord have mercy, some real evangelists, I'm not talking, I'm, some real people to find themselves ministering to those in jail and God is going to raise an army. You watch what I say. God is going to birth. Here's the thing about ministering to prisoners. They don't have any ministry ambition. So they're not going to be like a lot of these master people in churches that can't wait to hurry up and get a microphone in their hand and can't be corrected or rebuked and will leave you for an opportunity if you presented themselves. People in prison have nothing to lose. So once you go in there and you show them that there is worth and you put curses off of them and you labor for them, watch this, because they, you know they can't give you nothing back. That's how you know real character. What you're able to do for people who can't repay you. And many preachers are going to be held back because they only minister to those who can reciprocate. But it takes the anointing to be to people something without expecting them to be it back. That is a warning. Jesus rebuked them saying, you didn't come to see me. I know this is real basic Christianity. You didn't come to see me. You didn't feed me. I was starving and you were shouting and dancing. Hey, hey, hey. Wow. If you done it unto the least of these, I tell you by the spirit of God, a cry has gone out in the earth for the least of these. Wow. You must posture yourself. Because it is a prosperity test. I receive the word of the Lord. This is a first fruit year. So this year is going to be a year where God uh, starts a lot of new traditions. 
A lot of new patterns, a lot of new things will be uh, set by what happens this year. And here is something very strong. I'm going to get into the nation now. Here is something very strong that God has convicted me about. I don't care if you've been in ministry 20 days uh, a year. The Lord told me this is the year where I want you to start legacy building. There are a lot of people who are not invested enough in how they're going to be known when they are no more. The hand of the Lord came upon me strong and he said, I want you every day working on your story. What will people think about when you are not here? I want you building legacy. Now, part of what that means is that you've got to focus because concentrating on legacy is not an easy thing to do when you have uh, current annoyances and, and needs. But I'm challenging you, spend time this year working on legacy, working on, even if you are an unwed person and you're unmarried, I want you to start preparing for what type of inheritance, natural and spiritual, you want your grandchildren to have. I believe the reason the Spirit of God is challenging us in that way because He wants us to be focused. Favor can distract us. So you didn't know that there was anything dangerous with favor. But a lot of people had it and worshipped it and so they lost it. God does not want you to worship what He gives you. He wants you to receive it and use it as ministry. So I believe legacy concentration is a large part of what God wants out of us. I receive the word of the Lord. I am concerned about our president. I'm going into the nation now. If you're an intercessor, you need to begin to write this stuff down and pray a lot of it. Some of it can be reversed. Some of it will not. But I'm, I'm concerned about the health. I begin to have visions of our president falling dizzy and collapsing at uh, um, uh, uh press conferences and I started to see strange cellular activity forming at the base of his stomach, bacteria and something in his heart valve. We need to pray. Now as much as you don't like it, you think whatever it is, it would be absolutely catastrophic because I'm going to tell you a secret as a Nathan prophet who would get off this if he were to die is worse than him. Sir, would you tell so you him? need to be warned about the curses you release out of your mouth. It is okay to disagree. It is okay to not like it. But you have got to be very careful about causing death uh, or calling forth death or saying casual stuff because it would really be dangerous. As I said before, and I haven't uh, reviewed the word of the Lord from last year, we are preparing for war tensions. I really do believe that by the time the end of that era is, is closing, that we're going to be ripe for war tension. North Korea right now is plotting some very dangerous chemical warfare and they're going to use our waters to do it. We have got to really pray for strong, strong, strong counsel, strong influence. And we've got to pray for the physical health. You're going to see it come out, speculations of it. The physical health, his heart, the Lord, the, the, those two areas, his stomach and his heart. And we've got to pray that no bacterial infections or no odd things take him out of here. Because if so, we would be in a much worse condition. I know we're talking black folks, so y'all don't like that. But I'm just telling you, you've, you've got to allow the law of honor to work. Now, here's how honor works. It's not really honor until you can honor the dishonorable. Now, that is free. The rest will cost you. Amen. Here's something that excites me, Dr. Ross, you're such a daughter. God told me, tell my people I'm about to dance with the dollar. The Spirit of God is about to bless the American dollar. Come on, sir. Now, if you're one of those wackos that sit in your basement and judge America and talk about the end is near and the coming, you keep that stuff in your house. I have heard from the Lord. He told me, this, this is the word, I will do more with the dollar. So I want you to see this. Be wise in what you're saving and how you're saving it because things are about to shift. Things will not cost what they used to cost. You're going to find that there's going to be a sweet spot in real estate and land. And for those that have money, it's going to be a very beautiful thing. He will do more with the dollar. Now, where's the warning in that? If you are upset because that's all you have, you're going to miss out on the opportunity to acquire and to acquire quickly. He's going to do more with the dollar. Maybe that bless you. That bless me. He said he's going to do more. He's going to blow on the American dollar. You will see a change in its value. And what it was worth is going to be really, really, really different. So I received the word of the Lord. The Supreme Court is on the heart of God. 
There are great conspiracies getting ready to brew this year on the Supreme Court. We have got to really pray about definitions and we've got to pray about our Constitution. Now, those of you who pray about this, these things, uh, and, and I know sometimes if you're not talking about something that's immediate, it's a little boring, but pray into the Supreme Court. Satan is trying to birth a lot of stuff through agnostic and atheist judges on that bench, and one of them have to do with a continual assault on the Scriptures, on the Bible. So I want you to really be praying about the Supreme Court. We need God's hand in our justice system. Does that make sense to you? I saw continued trouble. Now, this is really odd, but I saw continued trouble with, uh, and you know, okay, the way I explain the word of the Lord, imagine trying to prophesy about cell phones in the 50s. It would have been very difficult to describe. You'd be like, you're going to have a computer and it's going to look at you and you just couldn't say it. So a lot of what I'm trying to describe, I don't have full language for, but I'm just going to tell you what I see. There's something happening with the laws of time and space. Okay? So in the future, you're going to see that the way that people travel is going to be a lot different. As a byproduct of that, in 2018, the way that people make cars, I just want to give you this, I know a sound bite of this may get out, but if you work for like a, a car factory or something like that, you need to be planning to have another source of income. I see automotive factories experiencing great trouble this year. Um, um, Chevy and Ford and those things like that experiencing great shakeups because there is a shake coming in transit and transit technology and it's going to affect people who are reliant on factory work so that's kind of a warning uh, for you I do see that the tides are going to begin to turn in real estate you will see for the first time since the since the since the decline in America you will see a buyer's opportune market now, and I'm not certain that that means that stuff is going to get cheaper or if you're going to be able to afford it. But I see that God is about to shift something dynamically over the hands of those that steward because he wants us to have rulership over the terra firma. So I receive the word of the Lord. I heard that. So I receive the word of the Lord. Here's something that blesses me. This will be a year for your local and your citywide elections of political upsets. You're going to find that this is the season of the underdog. There will be people who have occupied political seats uninterrupted that will elegantly approach this season like they're going to continue in the seat. And there's going to be upsets, city after city. You're going to see it on the news, the underdog. Fresh political voices are on the rise. There are people being groomed in secret to, to, to bring forth and birth revolutionary action through political policy. So you watch and see, there are going to be people that smell like sheep, that's been feeding stuff in the field, that are being anointed right now. They've been moving through godless education and through godless culture, and God is getting ready to literally, under an open heaven, position people, here's what I heard, out of nowhere. If you are here and you are a spiritual believer and you've got political aspirations, I take authority over that religious spirit that's got you feeling guilty for wanting to be an elected official. You religious demon, you, you will not hold these people back. It is an anti-Christ campaign to keep the sons of God out of government. This is the year of your release. This is a year of your release. Those of you in the room, you prophets and intercessors that's been flirting with going to law school, I say it is so. It is so. God is trying to man down the future with watchmen. It is so. So fresh political voices and upsets are going to come. Um, I see something brewing with our military. We need to begin to pray for the top tier of our defense team. Um, Satan is trying to divide uh, and conquer when it comes to American security. So I really do, and, and, and I'm going to try to find a way myself because this is, my father uh, was a veteran. Um, I'm so burdened about the armed services and how neglected they are. You know, when you deal with military people and Navy people, you deal with the people who are offered a variety of gods. And so, you know, you see a lot of them that lose their sanity, uh, that lose their emotional soundness, and God is letting me know that he's creating an inroad, a death 
desperate inroad for ministry to those types of people. And it's important uh, because if they are not quality, then we are not secure. So if you are out there and you've been feeling provoked to be a chaplain or you've been feeling provoked to God to go into that area, it is so. Do it for in the name of Jesus to send people in because God is concerned about our soldiers. And I'm telling you, as it is in the spirit, it is so in the natural. God is concerned about how little we understand about war and militarism in the spirit. So he's trying to join militant efforts in the natural and in the spirit. And a part of what that's going to mean is those of you that minister to those that are in the armed service. I receive the word of the Lord. There's something different that's going to happen with corn this year. I know that's really odd. But God told me he was blowing on harvest. And I'm not talking about spiritual. I'm talking about literal harvest. You're going to find that weird things. I know that sometimes when I prophesy, I'm like, Lord, did you just? But I'm telling you what I heard. You're going to see different light sources. You're going to see different ways to energize stuff. What the Lord is doing is opening up the brilliance of creation. Mm. He's beginning to show and make the heathen fascinated at what he already put in the earth. So you're going to find the vegetables start doing real odd stuff. I mean, stuff like corn. And you're going to be like, my God. And you're going to find that God is creating innovative chemical changes and even molecular upgrades to vegetation. You're going to watch God do that in a powerful way. I laugh now, but you're going to say, I told you so at the end of the day. Uh, this is a season for you to make long-term investments. A part of how people have gotten distracted, and I want to be careful with this, but here's how I'll say uh, there is a recent financial phenomenon that many people uh -huh. in greed have gotten excited about, uh -huh. and you're going to watch it collapse as surely as Jesus is Lord. So you ought not put all your resources and all your hope in anything that promises you quick money. I'm telling you with my own eyes. I have seen the quick thing money. burst and I've seen a mocking source come out. It's, it's really funny how people don't consecrate, don't sow, don't invest, and think God's going to blow in some, some scheme to make you more unclean than you already are. You're going to watch God prove that I alone am Jehovah Jireh. Yes. It is so. It is so. Okay. Um, I have seen a Wall Street phenomenon. You're going to watch as God begins to do odd things with investments. Hear the word of the Lord. There's going to come a day. There are patents. I've seen it in the spirit now. But I saw this in a weird way. Now, when I was little, I would watch George Jetson. Y'all remember George Jetson? Okay. The Jetsons. Now, what I'm about to tell you sounds like it's going to be from the Jetsons. But, you know, whatever. Especially with surgery and military. There's going to be a day where robots walk the earth like me and you. This is the truth. And I see robotic technology and an opportunity to invest in them now. I know it sounds weird. If you are an investor, if you're wise, find everything that has something to do with robots and robot technology and robotics and all that stuff. Because in less than a decade, they will do surgeries, you will find that they're going to be sent on war fields. There are going to be men and women that bleed out, that small robotic things will come and bandage them up. It's going to be one of the ways America saves money. It's going to be by putting them in robotic technology. So if you are an investor, then you need to take that and run with it and then pay your time. If you're not an investor, then just ignore that. But I'm telling you as surely as Jesus is Lord, you're going to laugh now. But there's going to be a day where robotic technology is a regular part of our everyday life. And you're going to see it very oddly, uh, especially with the, the blind. You're going to see the robots start to do what dogs do. You know how they have uh, uh, dogs and service animals. They will be replaced by robotic technology. Wow. And you're going to find that God quickens innovative minds to replace stuff like that. And it's going to move our culture forward. And it's going to be amazing. I saw bizarre happenings in heaven. They're going to be shooting stars this year. Uh, I told you that God was interested in reclaiming his reputation. You know, there's a lot of people that were uh, fascinated with the eclipse. But you want to watch this year as stars do things that stars don't do. Different families and species of stars are going to be discovered. They're going to be shooting here and shooting there. And it's going to be where David said in the Psalms, the heavens declare the glory of God. And God's going to allow this to happen because he wants men to marvel again. It's going to be a breath taking year and the beauty of the solar system is going to scream out I go not 
I go now and you're going to find wow. that God reclaims science. Heretofore, wow. science has been something that men have used to fight God. But watch and see. God's going to use science to speak for him. And it's going to defend him and not fight him. It is so that not otherwise. Uh, I'm concerned about flooding in the South. There is a warning going out to southern states about how many legislators and politicians have not updated things around riverbanks, streets that are full, and, and some of them are so dated that it shouldn't be even safe to cross some of the bridges or move across them, but God's going to convict a lot of them because we're going to see some unusual storms and floodings in the South. Uh, and, I, and I think this is going to be how God sets it up for cities to see you need new leadership. They should have voted on this stuff and turned this stuff over 10 years ago. Once we saw the levees were about to break, every city in America should have upgraded their everything. But unfortunately, that has not been the case. So we're going to see that some of these that seem like catastrophes are going to be the backdrop for new and revolutionary voices to direct the future of cities. Praise the name of the Lord. And you're also going to see pastors become mayors. I see this in yes. the I see this in the southern parts of America. Yes. Uh, southern parts, okay. people. You're going, yes. you're going to see that in the earth. Amen. Let me pull you right on out of there. Okay, now, I want to talk really quickly to the African-American crisis. There are three areas of favor that God is going to bless the African-American with. It's going to be media. It's going to, and, I, and what I mean, I'm going to be very specific. There will be African-American men and women that finally make large media purchases. I'm, so I'm not talking about airtime. I'm talking about networks. You're, you're going to find it. This has been something that's been trying to happen, but there are powers that be that resist that happening. My God. But I see a change of hands taking place in the spirit where God is going to finally allow people, yeah, people that have gone that have gone unrecognized. In fact, what I hear the Lord saying right now is watch this year as he honors Denzel Washington. Wow. If you know I'm called, then tell him I said it. But that will be a sign to you. God's going to honor him. How many of you know when you undergo dishonor, what happens is you leave no choice but for God to be the one that honors you. Honors you. And when God honors you, it's absolutely nothing like wow. when men dishonor you. It's really, really different when the Lord prefers you. Amen. So God's going to have that. You're going to see some major channels change hands. Here is a warning. Uh, I also saw some changes happening with Comcast. If you work there and that is where your career is, you might want to broaden your options because something is about to start to happen this year. And it's going to start as gradual cutbacks and it's going to start as gradual changes. But by the end of it, the company is going to do something that it didn't come out as. I don't believe the Comcast is going to end up a cable company. It's going to end up something else. So prepare for a shift because things are about to start happening ra radically in that area. Amen? Here is something that I heard that really excited me. I heard God bellow out of heaven. I will get the last laugh against cancer. I just saw myself run through there. I heard heaven proclaim. Watch and see. I will get the final laugh at cancer. This year. Whoa. I have heard the sound of the saints for 10 years. Grieving. Crying. Lamenting over this issue and it's almost like I can see God rising up off of his throne saying I've had enough you had oh, oh, watch and see we will get closer this year to a complete cure that it's going to scare everybody around I see exposure coming to the FDA for concealing degrees of healing it is so it is so it is so it is so. Want to start small?
small and then it's going to end really big. Now if God can do it for cancer, how many of you know HIV has got to be next? I got some on the proper side, but I feel this thing. Don't you know in heaven there is no such thing as an incurable disease? I told you the heavens were open, and if you are here and you got a loved one, or you got a brother or a sister or a child that has received a death decree, the devil has no right to cause to die something that God said should live. He is the life giver. He is the life giver. He is the life giver. You will see it with your eyes. Please have a seat. Yeah. I've got some more to prophesy, but he told me, pull them handkerchiefs back out. Pull that oil back out. And I want you to labor in the laying on of hands. I want you to spend time. I said, God, I'm in three services. He said, I don't care about that cock. I want you to spend time in demonstration this year because you're going to fool around and heal the right person and the right person is going to change your life forever. In the name of Jesus, may miracles explode in your midst. Signs, demonstration, and it's going to be a chain reaction. Hallelujah! I said a chain reaction. So if you're a preacher, teacher, preacher, I don't care what you got to do this year, you better hear me. Pull out the oil, the water, the handkerchiefs, take your shoes off, and put you a season in. You got to put some work in. Ask me why. God keeps good records. I said God keeps good records. Hebrews says, I have not forgotten your labor of love that you give to the saints. If God can watch you labor, he can watch you prosper and expand and grow. There are many people who want to be blessed beyond their labor, but I declare unto you, this is a season of labor. You've got to labor in deliverance and labor in discipleship and labor in counsel and labor. If you sweat, then keep going until you sweat some more. But I declare unto you, if you do it, you will see the best heaven has to offer. Say, I receive it. Okay. Let's hurry up. That escalated pretty quickly. God told me he was weakening the power of gang violence. Wow. the power of the urban terrorists. Now what I just felt hit my stomach was the prayers of a mother somewhere. The prayers of a grandmother somewhere who's got nieces and nephews and uncles and aunties who have been in the streets. God is going to deal with a killer named Streets. Get ready for prodigals to come home. I prophesy the head of the Judees, the head of the vice lords. God's going to move past the foot soldiers and he's going to get the ones in there's a power shift. A power shift. A power shift. I see it happening. He's going to he's going to weaken gang violence by taking the heads off, and the heads are going to cry out to God. What a lot of you need to realize is that a, a lot of the heads of these gangs have roots in the house of God. They have grandmothers. Hey, Jesus. They have grandmothers that call out on the Lord. And God would not be God if he ignored the prayers of grandmothers, if he ignored the prayers of the saints. He is hearing the prayers of those that prayed and then went home. There were people that would pray things before they died. Those prayers are still active. And I believe this is the season where we're going to be reminded that he's still the God that hears and answers prayer. I need an intercessor in here. Listen, I'm not trying to preach, but I've got a quick word for you. Do not give up. I don't care what people tell you about your kids, what people tell you about your nieces. Everybody needs an intercessor that will wrestle with them forever. He's going to answer. He's going to answer. He's going to answer. Shout hallelujah. God hears and he answers.
this prayer. You're going to find that New York is on God's heart. I see something being born in the barrels of New York City. There had been a darkness that had claimed that as its own. But God is starting to revive. And he's starting, I saw New York as a state in travail. And there are going to be new churches born there. There are going to be new ministries born there. There had been such a strong witchcraft and such a strong perversion over that area that God is going to respond again to intercession. He owes New York. He, he, he has to answer them. So I see God moving in the New York area. If you live there, I believe that this weekend is going to mark a turnaround for that entire territory all the way into Jersey. You want to see God move in Manhattan? You're going to see God move out of the Bronx? It's going to be amazing. And the segregation that has caught the Hispanic churches and the Latino churches away from the African American churches is going to be brought down. And you're going to see mixed churches that bring revival in that area. God is anointing apostles and prophets to that area and he's breaking the power of Pharaoh and Jezebel and he's raising up deliverers in that area. Come on, so I receive the word of the Lord. I see the devil trying to bring new, I'm hearing up, new psychedelics. So there's a new, there in, I don't know what this is, but whatever this thing is going to have people out of their mind for days. He, he wants to uh, release and increase insanity upon the earth. So what I see him trying to do is release, uh, how do I want to say this, um, legally and illegally, new drugs. It's going to be new addictive methods that make people hallucinate and, and, and commit crimes and murders that they legitimately do not remember. We have got to contend with the spirit of mental insanity like never before. We've got to contend with it. It is a very real thing. I know that when we say crazy, I know what we mean. We mean like socially odd, but I'm talking about there is a real attack from hell against people's mental stability and he's going to use the power of addiction to try to do it. So we've got to be praying. You know, it's going to be beyond mushrooms and, and uh, what else are they taking aloud uh, and all that stuff. I see odd things happening where they're going to begin to take in there. And, and here's what the Lord showed me. He said, it's going to be the, to this generation what crack cocaine was to the last. Wow. You're going to see people out of their minds behaving in an animal-like fashion. It is so imperative that churches cast out devils. I have to pull out there, but I'm just going to give you that as a warning. I understand inner healing and restoration and, and who breathing, but I'm telling you, this is a time for the house of war. Somebody has got to go to back with the forces of addiction, the powers of hell, and they've got to do restorative conversation and rehab men's lives through that ministry. Say, I receive the word of the Lord. There are righteous leaders coming in the police force. Praise God. God is going to begin to expose white supremacists. He's going to begin to pull the cover off of literal detectives who are in fact pimps. Wow. And you will find that God moves in the police academy. It's going to specifically happen in Chicago. But you're going to find that it's going to happen in several urban. I also see it happening in Detroit. Something is going on in Detroit with her policing right now. And I haven't been there in years, but I'm telling you when I hear about the Spirit of God, there is corruption of an unprecedented level that God's going to expose and disturb with the policing and this, uh, the policing systems in uh, Detroit. And you're going to find that God move it there. I heard the Lord say Donald Trump is not the last Trump with political aspiration. There is another from within his house that's being groomed. Okay. Watch and see. It will be a sign. There are new dynasties trying to be born around the world to hold down the control of the entire created world. Okay, they have heart goals. We'll be. We will. We will be as the Kennedys. Is what I heard him say. So you're going to find that if we don't pray for righteousness on every facet, America is going to experience a stagger. But if you're in the house of God, you're in the house of Goshen, so you ain't got nothing to worry about. No way. 
you know, they can be lava burning around us. Those of us that are submitted to God will always experience favor. Say it is so. All right, I got through Comcast. Here is the last thing that I want to give you. Um, I saw something happening with new surgical technique for uh, 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 things like um, uh, Down syndrome. And I saw where there would be uh, medical breakthroughs in their ability to foreknow, like in the early months of pregnancy, if a child would be born with a tendency towards Down syndrome, toward autism. Those of you that have been wrestling with straining, with managing that, hold fast and be encouraged. It will not remain this way. Things are going to change in America. The heavens are open and, and, and it's going to positively affect the church, but you're going to see it also radically impact the world as well. Watch our worshipers. The sweet psalmist of Israel is what I heard God say. Mm -hmm. Repetitively, continually, God is going to, God, remember I'm telling you this, God is going to arrange for the world to turn to worship. So don't do what y'all did last year. Watch what I say. God's going to raise up men and women who are friends with God to have totally bizarre opportunity with people that are in the most far, dark extremes. And the only people who will get upset are those that are religious. Those who have the heartbeat of God won't see it as compromise. They will see it as revival. Now let me tell you this. As much as I love you, who the guy gave you that word about? Was it Meat Mills? And Meat Mills or any uh, any other rappers call me? I'm going. I'm taking a picture. And if you say something stupid, I'm gonna talk about you by name. But I don't care. God did not say go ye into all the church. I'm not stuck you religious people who get mad about church people who love other people. I will leave y'all in a minute to go and work with them. You understand what I'm talking about? He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. The harvest is white. The harvest is white. The harvest is white. It is so. And not otherwise. The heavens are open. Oh, here's the other thing I saw. God's going to radically deal with infertility in the body of Christ. Radically, radically, radically deal with, with, with infertility in the body of Christ. The final thing that I neglected to say, there is an apostolic anointing coming upon entrepreneurs. Now this is going to get dangerous because I feel the temperature changing around this issue. God is going to send breakthrough through business. There's a mid, there are many Christians that have embarrassed the term business by making people pay for hobbies. Sir! Wow. A personal hobby wow. is not a substantiated business. Tell it. And when that thing turns over, don't blame God because he promised you, no, 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 no. You heard through ambition. God is blowing on business. I have felt a strong anointing for business. God is mantling his church to contend in gates. If you are in here, I'm telling you, make it a spiritual issue. You ought to put your head on your belly when you start thinking about your business plan and pray in the Holy Ghost because God can explain to you. Here is how you succeed in business. You get to a problem before anybody else. You have to be able to future cast and find a problem that people have yet to figure out and that's who prospers. The only people who prospers are those that get to problems first. How do you understand that? Whoa. I'm going to prophesy to a couple of you because I hear it real quick. But if you've got a business, just join me in there real quick. Come on, put your hand on your belly begin to pray of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about business. Come on. Come on. God is deepening your own. Oh, come on. Oh, you sound angry. Okay, come on. Business is coming out of you. Business language. Business strategy. Business strength. I'm not just talking about candy and cookies. I'm talking about business that makes you competitive on a global level. Business that takes you to Tokyo. 
business that takes you to Asia, business that makes men call you from Dubai, business that impresses, that convicts, that persuades. You will do business and evangelism, business and transformation, business and deliverance. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break your fear of business. I break your apprehension of business. May you experience this weekend an encounter with God the CEO. May business begin to be stirred in you. May business be stirred in you. In the same way you were stirred towards salvation and you were stirred towards deliverance, may you be stirred with a business anointing, the Joseph anointing, the Daniel anointing, business anointings being birthed in you as you pray. In the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, even those of you that have inventions, I release grace for patterns, patents, and copyrights in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, it's much bigger than what you know. Let that thing be born in the earth, be born through vessels of God in the name of Jesus. And I command you to be emancipated from every self-inflicted limitation. I command you to be loosed from every curse in your blood, every curse of death against you and I command the spirit of inspiration the spirit of revelation the spirit of wisdom and insight to come upon you for business in the glorious name of Jesus and may the God of heaven be glorified as you sell, as you trade, as you publish as you promote and as you exchange in the name of Jesus but I saw the heavens open and out of the heavens came tools for business and resources hey, and firms and firms and companies in the name of Jesus. I hear the Spirit of God saying, if you will press into this, I'm building a dream team. God is getting ready to anoint a team for you. Come on. He's going to anoint a team for you. You will no longer have more vision than team. God is shifting the competence of your team. Come on. I see that program resurrected from the dead. I see that grant being called from under the ashes. I see that girl's home. I see that boy's home. I see fresh water in Africa. I see hospitals. I see you starting a ghetto. Hey, that's for me. I see you starting a ghetto. I see you starting a clinic. I see charter schools being born out of people who love the Lord. Come on. It's bigger than a musical and it's bigger than a sound. God is trying to use you to change the world. He's trying to use you to break fall. Hey, come on, pray the Holy Ghost a little while longer. I see that happening. Come on, I see that happening. I see that happening. Come on. If you've got something in you that you know is trying to get out, the heavens are open. Come on. Just like you dedicated your child to the Lord, just like you dedicated your body to the Lord, take you a minute Consecrate your idea to the Lord. Oh, consecrate that vision to the Lord. Open your mouth. Consecrate that enterprise to the Lord. He's anointing you for business. He's anointing you for business. There is global business. God is a businessman. And he's marking business all in the earth. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I feel that shaking in here. Come on, press into that. I believe God can change your IQ level. I believe God can give you eyes to see what other people ignore. I believe that God can make you sensitive to solutions. I believe God can make you notice what other people overlook. And I believe streams are coming. Streams are coming. Streams are coming. All you've been used to is one stream. And it's become your idol. It's become your source. But I hear a shaking in the bushes. There is a realm coming where you will have more than one string. Get ready for multiple births and multiple ideas. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, He's releasing the anointing to employ, the anointing to shift, the anointing to change lives through gainful employment. It is so in this hour, but God is promoting His people and catapulting them violently into places of influence. Hey, hey, hey. 
around the throne of God, there are multiple waters and streams. God wants you to use the anointing this year to do more than quicken. And he wants you to use the anointing in intelligence and spend time in planning. Because this is the Cairo season of God. The heavens are in fact open. It is so. Let's just press into that for a little while. I'm going to move on the Father do it. Even this weekend, as we're learning about the fivefold and engaging the gifts of the Spirit, will you grip men and women with business power and business boldness? Some of you have ideas, but you have lacked boldness. You have been passive in your creativity. You have had something in you dormant, and you just didn't have the courage to move in it. In the name of the Son of God, I bind the power of fear, the power of intimidation, the power of comparison. This is the last year in your life. You'll spend your year in regret. You will not come to the end of 2018 saying, I wish I should have, could have, would have. This will be the year where prophecies are fulfilled. Prophecies fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Let you go, but we got to 
deal with this. This kingdom of anxiety. If you are around that person, I want you to respectfully develop a circle around them. Let's do that really quickly. All right. It's over.